On this episode of the Pinball Workshop, we're going to finish up going over the Neolock Inquisitor and the two modules I've yet to uh, put together, the SRAM and the DRAM uh, module. <clears throat> so we'll go through these and then I'll wrap up with some conclu conclusions, some pros, some cons to the Neolock Inquisitor. And uh, we'll talk about where this is important and if you should buy one. So that's coming up on the Pinball Workshop. Okay, so here is our Inquisitor SRAM blade that we're going to build today. Uh, as usual, let's go ahead and get this uh, undone and let's start the build process. Now, one thing that I uh, want to mention is this, is that this is the second module outside of the PIA module that I'm really interested in testing. Uh, a lot of these different specific uh, static, RAM mo uh, sp static RAM chips are things that I have, uh, and I want to be able to test those to see if those work. So great place to start, and I'll be able to do a lot of tests once we put this together. Here is the uh, PCB. So again, pretty easy in terms of uh, what needs to be soldered. Anybody with some basic soldering skills should be able to uh, do this pretty easily. I'm just going to put in here and start my knolling adventure. I had a couple of people comment uh, in the YouTube video and sent me some messages uh, that they uh, really appreciated the uh, the knolling that I did in the prior video. So that's something that I started doing a while back, uh, just in terms of organization of key parts and key pieces. So if that's something that you've never done before, I would definitely recommend trying it out sometimes because uh, just keeping pieces uh, in order and in line and knowing what you have, just from my perspective, makes life so much easier. Uh, when it comes to uh, putting things together. I do have lots of different resistors here, so I'm gonna try to pull out the ones that are all similar in terms of their bands. And since these are little eighth watt resistors, they're a little difficult to tell. Those are the same. Reds, I believe these are the same. There's an orange. No, get back in order. More red. Red. And white. Complete. All right. Let's get to soldering.
Now that I've completed the SRAM module, I'm ready to do some tests. So what I'll do is I'll bring over uh, Inquisitor Core. Let's take out the PIA tester module. in the SRAM, plug it in. All right, so here it is. Let's go ahead and just turn her on, see what happens. Great, it says SRAM one module was, a, was found. We see a green LED light here asking us to select our test. So what I'll do is let me pull my used RAMs. So I've got quite a many of used RAMs from old MV RAM uh, replacements. So let's see if we can find in here. we will find something to, uh, to test. Now the problem I think I'm going to have is, let's see, here's a 62. So here's a Hyundai 6264 uh, RAM. Let me see if I get that to focus, please. So let's go ahead and drop that in our zip socket. Lock it in place. Select over until I get to the 6264. Here's the select test. Let's click enter. RAM test okay. So I know this RAM chip is good to go. Let's test some other ones in here. Here we've got a, I believe it's a 5101. So yeah, this is a an old pool. You can see that it's got that old Philippines on the bottom. I always see those in old, uh, old chips here. And that's going to be really hard to read, but you can take my advice. There we go, 5101. So let's try this AMI chip. So also tells you it's uh, of the older variety. Let's lock it in place. Let's go find our 5101 test. Here we go. Let's click our enter button. RAM test okay. So didn't take long to test that. We know that that was good to go. Let's find some other different ships that I may have in here. Uh, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Ninety sixteen can't test in this one. Nine four four six. I don't know if that one's on here or not. Mm -hmm. Don't believe it is. I've got another uh, Hyundai 6264, so let's test that. Let's 
it would be nice if it would auto sense the chip. I'm assuming that's probably a little more difficult to do from a programming perspective, but that would be nice. Uh, let's test this one. And that is okay. So the good news is I pretty much confirmed that I can, I'm going to imagine that most all these are good. Um, they were moved from working games to put NVRAM chips in, but it is good to see if uh, they are working. So this is a 5101. Let's go back and select it. RAM chip OK. Some of these I don't remember exactly where I got them, so I'm trying to figure out. Uh, as you know, sometimes the names are a little bit different. This is a, 50, a 5517 Toshiba chip. I believe this is a 6116. So let's go ahead and attempt that. Six one one six. Chip OK. So great. So the great thing about this is if I've got a lot of chips like this, or if I've already got a board where I know I've got the chip already uh, pulled off the board and want to test it, this is a great little tester that you can have out here uh, from this. So that's our SRAM. Now let's uh, work on putting our, D our, our dynamic RAM blade together and see if we've got any chips to test from that side. Now let's put together the last module that I have, the dynamic RAM module.
All right, now that we've got our DRAM board built, let's test it. We'll bring over the Inquisitor core, drop our blade in here. Let's turn it on. All right, we get our select test button again. I did find one chip. I don't have a lot of these, unfortunately, but uh, that are pooled, but there's a, there's a 9016. Uh, dynamic RAM chip. So I'll go ahead and drop that in into the ZIF socket and let's do our test. Oh, DRAM bad. So there we go. Uh, I'll doesn't need to double double check here. Uh, I do see that this is also a 6264, so there could be something uh, with that. You know, on further inspection, I do believe this is not a DRAM chip. I do believe it's just a 6264 chip. Um, so we can see there that obviously with that specific chest on a 9016DA, uh, that test did not work. So I'll have to look and see if I have any other chips that. Uh, are specific DRAM chips. I don't think I have one, but we can at least confirm that in this case, this seems to be working appropriately. Uh, it's coming up, we're doing our tests. We can select our different tests. And again, uh, just some very uh, uh, key things that I can walk through from a testing perspective. All right, and that concludes our build of the Neolock Inquisitor core with the different blades. I've been able to spend some time with the uh, Neolock Inquisitor core module and some of the blades that come with it. And I like to run down some pros and cons in terms of this device and if you should buy it. So some of the key pros, uh, probably the first one is that it's a complete package. Uh, if you're doing board work, uh, where you're doing consistently tests, where you've got you know PIAs or SRAMs or DRAMs or other some of the other uh, blades that uh, Neolock makes, you know you have a very easy way to test it. Very kind of uh, click a button and see if it works. Um, I also do enjoy the extensibility. Again, by having these different blades, I can test a variety of different things uh, in one singular unit. So I, I think in terms of its pros. That is the thing that's really going for it in terms of what I like about it. Now, some of the cons about this is that it's quite a lot of money. So what I would say is if you're doing maybe sporadic board tests or you're testing boards, there's probably other things that I would, I would probably buy first from a diagnostic perspective. You know, I've showed some key things around Siegecraft and some of the things that they have from a diagnostic perspective. I think those are going to be much more helpful for the money than, than jumping to something like this. The other thing is, is that some of these tests that this can provide, you can find other ways to test those key pieces. So things like test ROMs, like I've showed the Leon test ROM in my System 9 and System 11 videos, uh, where you can test the PAAs while they're in circuit. So those are other ways that you can do some tests. The final thing, at least from a pinball perspective, is that there's a lot of boards, especially older boards and early solid state machines, that the, they're not in sockets. So in order to be able to use this, you've got to pull the board off the PCB and be able to test it. So, you know, that's a lot of time that you may be able to spend to doing those specific tests. Uh, on newer boards, uh, more chips are socketed, uh, so you would be able to test those in a very quick and easy manner. So, question is, is this worth buying? And I say it depends. It really depends on the amount of board level work that you're willing to do. I think if you're someone that is, let's say, fixing three to four boards a year on pinball machines, you know, maybe this is worth it, picking it up and doing that way. I would say others that maybe don't have the technical knowledge today on using things like an oscilloscope or a logic probe, this is a great test fixture to have within your shop. But if you have that knowledge today and you have the other means for burning EPROMs and understanding what a logic probe is or using an oscilloscope, this is a little redundant to buy. So depending on your level of technical knowledge, uh, this may be worth picking up and making it part of a text fixture, text fixture in your shop.
If you like videos like this, uh, where I'm going over diagnostics, uh, putting them together, uh, testing them, getting some information, please uh, feel free to write in the comments below. Let me know. Uh, there's a couple of more diagnostic tools that are available uh, online that I'm looking up picking up. Uh, if so, if there's some good feedback on this, I'm hoping to cover uh, some other ones in the future. Okay, well, that's going to do us for the pinball workshop for today. Uh, feel free to leave any uh, feedback for me below, and we'll have some more exciting videos later on. Take care.